Welcome to the 39th session of Daily Jesus, where today we read from Romans chapter 7 to 8, rather short today. Today's chapters, Paul tells us that the law previously functioned as a mediation of allowing us to confess our sins. His, uh, he tells us that our inner selves desire to go against these, um, the teachings of this law and that we by nature don't have the ability nor the desire to do good. However, the laws of the Holy Spirit for those who are in Christ frees us from the law of sin and death. Paul reminds us today that our, that our, um, that our weak flesh cannot win over the demands of the law, but when the Holy Spirit dwells within us, it is entirely possible and achievable. We are still by nature weak, though. However, the Holy Spirit that dwells within us helps in our weaknesses and intercedes for us. Because God has chosen us, no power or thing can separate us from the love of God. So keeping this in mind, let's all come together. Uh, open your Bibles to Romans chapter 7 to 8. Romans chapter 7, verse 1. Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions, aroused by the law, were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. What then shall we say, that the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. For I would not have known what it is to covet, if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. For apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it, killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good, then, bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. Chapter 8 There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. 
For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit of life because of righteousness, if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you do not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself would be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are accordingly to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, as it is written, For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now, keeping what we've just read in mind, let us come to a few application questions that allow you to um, that help you meditate on what we've just read. Firstly, chapter 7 today tells us that in the past, we had to try to keep the law according to our own volition, but now we, have, we live with the help of the Holy Spirit. What is something that you still try to live by your own might and power? How can we live a life that is completely reliant on the Holy Spirit? Secondly, the Bible tells us today that the, um, there is suffering for God's children. However, despite the suffering, how are we able to um, live without fear, according to what was said in chapter 8 today? And finally, how is Christ, through the passage today, leading you to a moment of repentance and conviction? Concluding this, let's all come to a moment of prayer as we conclude what we've just read. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you that you've called us 
to be able to read and open our day with the word. Through chapters 7 and 8, you've taught us today the importance and the role of law and um, uh, how we are completely reliant on you through the Spirit who guides us and convicts us, who moves in our lives to dwell within us, empowering us and enabling us to live um, in our weaknesses and sufferings. Father, we recognize today that we are indeed weak individuals who are completely reliant on you. And yet we live in open defiance and rejection of your, pro, um, um, of your provisions and your guidance. So Father, we come to a moment of repentance this morning. Of all the times, that even, this, even today, that we've lived in rejection of your power and in rejection of your guidance. And Father, we use this moment um, to come to you in humility, to be able to seek the indwelling of the Spirit within us. And we ask, Father, that um, the Spirit intercedes in our weaknesses, helps and lifts us up so that we may be able to carry out the functions of the law, for us to be able to confess our sins daily so that we may be drawn closer to you. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, as you conclude, um, please um, continue to pray and to continue reading on as we uh, progress through the day. And I, um, I hope that this day is filled with whatever um, our God has convicted and uh, shown and revealed to you. Embrace Jesus embrace people.